Moses, the mouthpiece of God, instructed the Hebrew slaves how to prepare for the Passover meal and for their exodus from Egypt. They were to eat the meal as though people on a journey with their sandals on and a walking stick in their hand as they ate. Interestingly, in today's gospel, Jesus begins sending his 12 apostles out two by two, and he tells them to take nothing for the journey. They can wear sandals, and they can bring a walking stick with them. The Hebrew slaves, when they were driven out of Egypt by Pharaoh, they left their homes behind and undoubtedly quite a few possessions. And as they began their journey into the desert, they needed to trust in God to provide as they were heading to the Promised Land. Interestingly, Jesus, as he instructs the Twelve, tells them to take nothing for the journey, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They are to trust that God will provide as they go off and preach a message of repentance. The Twelve must have seen like a connection and that God is doing something new. This is a new exodus. It's a new message because this message of repentance comes from the Greek word metanoia, which means a change of attitude, a change in how we live our life, a change in how we see life itself. Something new is underway. Jesus sends them out two by two. Interesting, because he could have sent them out one by one and covered a lot more ground. And maybe say, you know what, by going it alone, it's going to toughen you up for the future mission I have in place for you. Two by two, it tells us something about who we are as humans and it tells us something about the mission, how we are to have this change of attitude. Not only are we to depend on God, but we also, two by two, are called to depend upon each other. None of us is strong enough to make this journey on earth alone. Take little Len and Arlene. She's relying on mom and dad and the Hamas family and a parish family and beyond. St. Paul says that we are one body in Christ. And he says this, Though we are many parts, we are one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, Well, I don't need you. And so also, when a teenager graduates from high school, can't turn to mom and dad and say, well, I don't need you now. A pastor and each member of a parish family, we can't look at each other and say, well, I don't need you. We actually do need one another. We are not to live solitary lives. We are to do this together. It is a challenge to work together and to live with others. And from time to time, I know what it's like myself to think, you know what, it would just be easier to do this myself. And that can be a trap. Because we do need each other. And when the world sees us working together with a spirit of joy, and with helping hands in our marriages, in our families, in our parish, in our nonprofits, and all these different workplaces, then the world can actually see, see the mission that there is truly a change in attitude of how we, as followers of Christ, are living in the world that they would look at our marriages and families and workplaces and say, I want to be a part of that. This mission of living this new message, this good news, is not just for professionals, as the prophet Amos said in the first reading. 
He was told to leave because you're not part of the prophets that are in the career. I would be like a career prophet, so to speak. But each and every one of us are called from our fields. And to live this message, it isn't just for priests and deacons and Sister Kathy and those lay people who go through the diocesan lay formation prog program, certified. We are all called to this mission. In fact, many of us are literally called to go two by two in the sacrament of marriage. In the journey of life, let us depend on God and his providence. Let us also depend on one another and not on our own strength. Let us live this metanoia, this change of attitude, this good news, so the world can see what Christ came to teach, and they can be drawn in to live it with us in one body.